I'm going to demonstrate a technique called acid-base extraction, which is going to be used numerous times throughout your laboratory experience. I'm going to separate fluorinone from benzoic acid. So the first thing I'm going to do is to take fluorinone. You can see it's a nice crystalline yellow solid. And I'm going to put that into a flask. Then I'm going to take benzoic acid, which is a nice white solid, and I'm also going to put that into the same flask. There we go. Put that on the side. And I'm going to dissolve it in ether. We're going to be using a separatory funnel. The first thing you should do before you do any extraction in a separatory funnel is to test to make sure it doesn't leak. So here's, a, here's our ring. And we've also chosen a ring that's small enough to hold this, but not to have the funnel fall through. That, of course, would be tragic. We're going to take some more diethyl ether, and we're going to put it in here just a little bit. Okay, just a little bit, and we can see that there's no dribbling of diethyl ether down through the tip of the funnel. So let's, uh, let's take the solution that we made and make sure that the stopcock is closed. And let's pour our solution in here. The solution, of course, is uh, solution of the benzoic acid and the fluorinone, and it's yellow, of course, because the fluorinone is a naturally yellow solid. We want to make sure that we uh, get all of the solid into the separatory funnel. The reason that we have to do this is that diethyl ether has a boiling point of 35. Now, the uh, human body temperature is about 37 degrees centigrade. So technically, you could actually boil diethyl ether in your hand. It's not that easy to do, but uh, it does leave a residue because it evaporates so readily. OK, so we've got our solution in there. Let's put our diethyl ether aside. And now what I'm going to do is add a solution of sodium hydroxide in water. Now, as you can see from the flow diagram, that we're going to separate fluorinone, which is both water insoluble and inactive with base, from benzoic acid, which is water insoluble, but will be converted in sodium hydroxide solution to sodium benzoate, which is water soluble. So that we're going to get sodium benzoate to go into the aqueous layer, and the fluorinone will stay in the diethyl ether layer. So here I have some sodium hydroxide solution. I'm going to put that also into our separatory funnel. And because the sodium hydroxide solution is is more dense than diethyl ether, okay, we're going to get a separation. Now, I'm going to add a little bit of water in here so that we can dissolve the solid which forms. Okay, there we go. We swirl that around, and we also vent it. Now listen, you hear that? That's diethyl ether evaporating in the separatory funnel. And you've got to vent it often, because if you don't, the, the top and the separatory funnel will literally fly off. 
Okay, so there we go. You can see that the uh, lighter layer, the diethyl ether layer, is on top, and it still has the fluorinone in it, but the lower aqueous layer okay, is colorless. So the fluorinone, at least in our observation, is still in the diethyl ether layer. I'm going to swirl that around a little bit more so that we get all of that solid dissolved. And there it goes. All right. Okay, that's the first step. Presumably, we've made a separation. We now have sodium benzoate in the aqueous layer, which is a lower layer because it's more dense. And the fluorinone, which has not reacted with the sodium hydroxide, has stayed in the upper diethyl ether layer. Now what we want to do is to empty the sodium hydroxide layer, the lower layer, into our 125 ml Erlenmeyer. So let's do that. At this point, I want you to notice something. Here, if I put that top on and leave it on, it soon happens that the flow of water stops. And students often wonder why this happens. It's because you've created a partial vacuum up here. And the way to start the flow again is to remove the top. So make sure that you keep that top off when you empty your separatory funnel. The separatory funnel is shaped the way it is because when you get to the junction between the upper lower dense layer and the bottom higher dense layer, you can go slowly and then you look at it like this and you, you can make a very sharp cut. Now we're going to add HCl. We're going to convert this back to an acidic solution. And watch. You can see that the benzoic acid is coming out of solution. See that? Okay. Now let's test to see if the medium is acidic. Stay in there. Red. And that means the pH is approximately 1, which is a guarantee of being acidic. Well, benzoic acid in this form is not very useful. So what we have to do now is to suction filter away the solid from the liquid. And what we have here, we have here is a, is a setup to suction filter away the water. And I have a small funnel like this. It's called a Hirsch funnel and it has what's called a neoprene fitment on it. And that's going to fit into the neck of the sidearm flask. We hook up the vacuum to it and we turn it on over here and we put a little water in here to nest the piece of filter paper that's in the Hirsch funnel. And now what we'll do is we'll pour our suspension through there and let's Rinse it with a little bit of pure water. Okay. Okay. And now you can see that we've isolated the benzoic acid that I originally mixed with the fluorinone.